Hi everyone, uh, really great to be here. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, web archiving data and tools, and so I'll be talking about work files, which is uh, one of the components of web archives, and then uh, the second part, I'll, I'll demo a tool I've been working on for the past uh, several years. Uh, and so, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been uh, working on uh, open source web archiving tools for the last eight years now. Um, initially, I was working at the Internet Archive on their Wayback Machine there, um, and I created a project called Web Recorder in 2015, and I've been uh, leading development on it at rhizome.org, which is a, a digital arts nonprofit uh, since 2016. Um, and so, uh, kind of starting with the basics, uh, so what is web archiving exactly? Uh, and, well, the basic idea is that it's uh, uh, essentially capturing, uh, storing in some way, and providing access to web content. Uh, that there could be additional parts to it, but that's sort of the key, the key parts to it as I, as I see it. Um, and it's actually quite distinct from uh, scraping or extraction, since we're not trying to extract certain types of data from the web. We want to get everything uh, such that it's preserved in an archival fashion. Um, and it's also not uh, saving URLs, uh, because that's, that's a little bit different. We're actually saving, when we think of the web, we think of uh, HTTP as the, as the main protocol of the web. And so web archiving involves capturing the uh, HTTP request and response traffic exactly as it comes down the wire, essentially. Uh, and another part to it is that web archiving doesn't have to mean archiving the entire web. That, that's sort of how it perhaps uh, initially started with the Internet Archive doing a lot of crawling, but there's also other approaches to, to doing web archiving. Uh, in particular, web, web archives could actually be quite small uh, and targeted. Uh, Web archives can contain small bounded web uh, objects, uh, essentially just one or two pages or uh, a single website. And uh, it's also possible to focus on the quality of a web archive rather than sort of how many pages you've captured. Uh, and that the quality is also really important. Uh, and uh, so why, why do web archiving? Um, well, actually, uh, a really great example is this uh, graphic that I've had. It's now, uh, a couple years old uh, from the uh, British Library, uh, who are one of the institutions that do web archiving, uh, and it kind of shows that uh, you know, over that gray and, and black area are the, the, the pages that have essentially disappeared from the web uh, and are uh, no longer available. And so over a time span of 10 years, uh, possibly sooner, uh, uh, anything that's online will eventually likely to no longer be available. And actually, uh, a pretty important secondary reason uh, that I think I want to mention uh, after the last couple of talks is that web archiving can also be an essential component of free reproducibility because of how much content is actually on the web. Uh, and I'll get to that a, a little bit later as well. Um, and so, uh, kind of starting, where is, uh, how is the web archive data stored? Uh, and uh, the key format for web archives is uh, what's called the work format, uh, or sometimes referred to as the work file. Um, and it's basically created in co collaboration between Internet Archive and many national libraries in 2005. Um, it's currently an ISO standard. So it's, uh, there's actually two revisions of the ISO standard. The first one was in 2005, the second one was in 2016. Um, and it's designed to essentially package HTTP requests and responses and also support uh, deduplication, uh, metadata, and actually also st storing, essentially storing arbitrary resources in, in this package format. Um, and so, real quickly, I'll, sh I'll show uh, an example of, of some of these work records. Um, essentially, the, the work records are uh, concatenated together, uh, and an example uh, is uh, so something like this. I know it might might be a bit hard to see, but uh, essentially it's uh, MIME style headers uh, before the HTTP headers, and then after that is the HTTP payload. So essentially s saving the entire HTTP transaction with additional metadata inserted in front of it. Uh, and there's also uh, usually a digest uh, that represents uh, a unique, essentially that the hash of the of the payload so that it can be deduplicated. And so uh, that can include the HTTP response record and uh, 
the request record is in a similar format, essentially stores the, uh, the request received during the HTTP transaction. And uh, that can include not just get requests, uh, it can include any HTTP verb, so including post, uh, uh, put, or you know, d even delete. Uh, so when, when, when archiving a URL, for example, actually involves storing both the request that was uh, sent to a server to, to get that URL and the response received from the server. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the, the workflow format does have a few limitations. Uh, one is that there's no index of records. Uh, it's just essentially a listing. Uh, there's no real defined metadata format. It's, uh, it's essentially, you, know, you, you can put arbitrary data in there, but uh, there's not a specified format other than uh, this sort of uh, headers and uh, and the, the payload after that, and so it's it, it's extensible, which is great, but also uh, a bit limiting in in some ways. Uh, there's not a way to specify starting pages, uh, which are URLs that you might want to load in order to actually browse a web a web page, uh, because it can contain any data. Uh, uh, and there's also not really support for. Uh, some of the more recent uh, web features, such as WebSockets, for example, there's not really a way to store WebSockets in work files or represent uh, dynamic history changes that you might see in a, uh, in, in a single page app, um, for instance. Uh, and so one way to deal with that uh, is, the key part is, the, is it, that we have is the, is the URL index. So in order to actually get something out of the, the work file, you need to be able to look it up by, by URL. And uh, unfortunately, there isn't really a standard for, for the sort of, the work file is sort of the main standard uh, web archiving data structure that, that is out there. Uh, there are a few uh, kind of pseudo standards. Um, and uh, it's actually a text-based, space-delimited <laughs> format for uh, uh, essentially looking up uh, entries in, in, in this work uh, file. And it was popularized by Internet Archive. Um, and it looks something like this. Uh, basically, a, a single line represents an entry in a work file. Um, a more recent uh, variation of this uh, includes uh, essentially, instead of just space delimited, we put uh, all of the data that's after the, the, the URL and timestamp into a JSON blob um, to make it a little bit more extensible. And uh, actually the, the first part of this format is designed to, uh, to uh, be looked up in a binary search. And so it's, it's specifically uh, formatted in such a way that uh, for example, the the domain is put uh, is, is reversed such that you could more easily look up all URLs that end in in, in .com, for example. So that's that's sort of a, a technique for uh, normalizing this data. Um, and uh, yeah, and actually, Internet Archive provides kind of a query interface that you could use to to look up this data for for many pages. Uh, essentially, anything that's that's in the Internet Archive. So Wayback Machine can be looked up uh, and it'll return uh, actually uh, a listing of, of many of these URLs in this format. Um, another important uh, data piece for Web Archive is, is uh, replay rules. And this actually uh, uh, is a little bit complicated, but, but I'll, I'll try to kind of summarize it, is that uh, in order to actually capture or, or replay a captured web page, uh, you have to replay the request and response traffic. And that can actually be more difficult than, than the actual capture. Um, and what you need to do is to ma match the HTTP request to response. Uh, and often cases, there may not be an exact match. And so in this way, Web, web Archive replays itself sort of a, a reproducibility problem. And uh, an example of that is uh, something like this, where you might have uh, a URL that, that's been captured, uh, it might end in one timestamp, but then when it's played back, uh, it has a different timestamp appended dynamically. And this happens all the time because 
uh, if a uh, user is interacting with a page during the capture process, uh, it might, they might wait one second to do something and then when they try to replay that page, it might wait two seconds and so they'll, they'll have a different timestamp. And so we need to figure out a way to fuzzy match essentially the certain parts of the URL away. Uh, and so there needs to be certain rules for, uh, uh, to determine which parameters to ignore. Oh, and, and here's a more, more complicated example. You might have, uh, again, a, a URL that has certain parameters that are significant and certain ones that are not. And so we need to only match one of the parameters but not the other two in order to be able to reproduce this, this particular URL. So the request might, might ask for, for the first URL but we only have the second one or, or vice versa. Um, and so these rules also need to be part of the, part of the web archiving system. Um, and then there's also web archive collections, uh, which is uh, uh, essentially a way to organize work files uh, and provide kind of a, a context and, and metadata to them and uh, group, group them into, into kind of uh, usable units. And there's not really a standard for that either. Um, it's also possible to analyze web archives, and there's a really great uh, tool set uh, called the Archives Unleashed tool set that provides data extraction uh, and you can extract text, uh, link analysis, and, and, and so forth, and that results in additional data. And so how can all this data be, be distributed? Um, well, that's still kind of a work in progress. Uh, uh, the data can include work files, the URL indices, page lists, replay rules, search indices, other derivative data sets, organized by collection. And uh, one of the things I'm currently working on is kind of creating a spec for including all this web archive data. So kind of uh, going beyond what's available in the work files and providing a way to, to specify and distribute neatly all of these, these other data sets that are part of web archiving. Um, and so next, I wanted to talk about uh, how could you do web archive on your own? Uh, and uh, for that, I wanted to demo the project I've been working on, uh, which is called Web Recorder, uh, and just a little bit, a quick intro. The purpose of Web Recorder is, is kind of web archiving for all, uh, which is uh, the idea is that anyone can create a web archive, and it uses the browser to capture, and the same browser to then replay uh, any website. That's, that's sort of the goal of the project, and uh, we're creating both uh, user-friendly service and apps for, for people to use, uh, as well as uh, a whole set of uh, open source tools for working with web archives. Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, kind of do a quick demo of, of Web Recorder. And so this is right now webrecorder.io. Um, and uh, I'll try to do a live demo, which is always fun. Uh, and so for example, I can enter the uh, the hashtag for csvconf, and I'll use the current browser. And so, what you're seeing here is that there's a uh, there's a size counter here that's indicating how much data has been captured so far, uh, and this data is written into a work file essentially. And so we could, and here it's loading Twitter through Web Recorder, which is a recording proxy, and uh, essentially as I uh, scroll down and probably see that uh, that size counter is is going up, and so more data is being captured. And now we're up to four points. Uh, you know, we're uh, can see that that more data is being uh, being captured. Uh, I won't click on the, on the live stream because that would be uh, would be that would be an interesting thing to do, uh, but I won't do that right now. Um, but I can. Uh, I can, for example, navigate to, uh, if there's a link on, the, on this page somewhere, for example, I can click on this, uh, and then this, uh, the, uh, this GitHub repository, uh, or just a page that's currently loaded, is now also being archived uh, in, uh, through Web Report. And I, I can stop, uh, and when I do that, there's a listing of pages, and so this is kind of what I was talking about with uh, key pages that are in that, uh, that are part of the collection. 
Um, so there, there's a lot more URLs in there, but these are the, the pages. And uh, um, I can, for example, click on this again, and uh, this will now uh, show the show the replay of the uh, of the. Yeah, it's essentially that we're now viewing the uh, the replayed version of this hashtag that I just browsed before. Um, but another part of, of what web archiving that I wanted to add is, uh, so we have all of the web archive data, but then what about the, the, the web browser itself? Uh, so even if we have all the data, can we still actually replay it later? Uh, and so browser features change and they become obsolete. Uh, fortunately, we can actually also preserve the browser itself using a Docker image. And, we can, and using that, we can provide browsers with Java and Flash. Uh, and so here's a, uh, um, just to kind of sh show that part of Web Recorder. Previously, I was using this current browser that I'm on. We also have an option to select a different browser. And we have these different versions of Chrome and Firefox. Uh, and so I'll, I'll go to this particular collection that uh, includes a version of Firefox that supports uh, that supports Java. We were able to to create that version as a, as a uh, as a Docker image, and so it's actually running. Oh, hopefully it will reconnect. So it's uh, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi through through my phone, so it might be a little bit. And so what it's doing, uh, what it's doing is it's actually show, uh, it's running a browser remotely uh, in a in a Docker container uh, in the cloud, and it's streaming that that connection. So this is a version of Firefox here that's running remotely, and it has this uh, embedded Java applet. Uh, and we might not be able to quite stay connected to Wi-Fi, um, but. Um, and so this becomes kind of a, an immediate issue, I think, for re reproducibility. Um, another example I just recently looked for is uh, Flash. Uh, and there's sort of a ton of, uh, uh, I just wanted to, to see what, uh, if there's any kind of, uh, a lot of Flash content out there. And so I found this uh, uh, page with Flash animations for physics. And so if I just load them in my own browser, uh, I'll probably just get this, that the Flash player doesn't isn't installed, but if I uh, go to Web Recorder, enter a URL, and select a uh, and select the Flash capable browser here, um, select this uh, version of Firefox, I should be able to. Hopefully, this will work. Uh, and so, this is that same page. Uh, but now if I click on any of these uh, projects, I can actually see the, the, the flash is now loading. Uh, and I can go through and uh, basically go through all of these or automated and, and capture these, uh, these flash applets, which probably will not be converted to, to JavaScript and, and have a working version of these. And so uh, this is kind of combining both web archiving with uh, uh, preservation and emulation of web browsers, uh, which I think will become more and more important for for being able to preserve uh, and reproduce uh, uh, content that that is online. Um, and yeah, so I can can stop that. I was capturing these, and then I can. So this is kind of the the, the view of the. I can then. Uh, Select one of the let's here, and then and, and now I'm in browsing mode, and so I, I'm actually browsing, uh, browsing this this particular uh, piece. Um, we also have a, a desktop app that that's being developed. We actually have a two, uh, one still in development, and, and the other is called the Web Recorder Player, which uh, allows for uh, viewing these web archives locally. And so I can also download this collection. Uh, right now, it's going to download as a as a single work file because the the new kind of uh, uh, multi multi collection uh, kind of uh, 
data structure format is not yet ready, so right now we're just packaging everything into work files. Uh, and then, uh, let's see if this works, and so, and so I can open it with the Web Recorder Player app. Uh, and I actually don't know if this will, maybe this won't work, so I don't know if this is the right version. Oh, yeah, so, so here is this uh, app that, that, that I've, uh, sorry, that this flash piece that, that, was, that I captured before running in the browser, or sorry, in, in desktop player, and to, sh to actually show that I could, uh, I could even disconnect from the Wi-Fi uh, and, you know, st still browse this, uh, to kind of show that this is uh, actually running uh, offline now. Uh, so I've, I've, I was able to capture this, this particular Flash project, download it, and now run it offline. Uh, I'll connect back the Wi-Fi. Uh, and yeah, and so that's that's sort of part of the the web recorder toolkit, uh, and kind of so all and all of this own tad is uh, open source, uh, and hopefully like to get more more people involved, uh, more users, and more contributors. And so I'll cover uh, some of the uh, kind of uh, some of the tools that we have available. So if you just want to read and write work files, uh, kind of the very basic, we have. An, uh, then we have a library called Work.io, um, and with that you can create work files with just four lines of Python, uh, basically kind of trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, this of course won't give you uh, what you see in the browser, this is just for a single URL at a time, uh, but you can do that uh, if needed. Um, if, you want to, uh, if you want to package existing files as works, we also have a small library for that called Workit which uh, allows you to convert a uh, directory of files into, uh, into a work file, essentially, so that they can then be opened up in a, a, as a web archive. Then we also have PyWB, which is kind of our Python uh, Wayback Machine slash Web Archiving Toolkit, and that's the core engine that powers Web Reporter. Uh, and then if you want to archive through the browser, uh, and I'll, I'll share these slides so you could uh, be easier to follow along. Uh, you could essentially uh, uh, use a, a simple script to launch a browser uh, and, and kind of do what, what I just showed uh, initially uh, on the command line. Um, and then uh, you could also host a, a Wayback Machine using these tools. Uh, and then uh, there's also the Web Recorder Player, which I showed earlier. And then we also have uh, uh, for the browser system with, with uh, older versions of Firefox and Chrome, uh, that is also available. It's part of the Old Web Today project initially. Um, that's also available on GitHub as a separate project. Um, and if you want to try everything, uh, the whole web recorder uh, configuration is available as a Docker Compose setup on, on our GitHub also, and it includes the, the entire package that, I, that I've kind of shown with the front end UI. Um, yeah, and so uh, kind of you know, uh, happy to answer any questions about all of this. Thank you.